And then the third public hearing this evening is item 1C, proposed um, amendment to chapter 153.002 definitions and section 153.076 parking, sections 153.082 exceptions, section 153.177 commercial zone conditional uses, and section 153.359 changes in plan by owner or developer. This is to modify the outdoor waiting activity areas and add outdoor dining activity areas as a use in the commercial zone and to add the definition for parking requirements and setback uses and setback exceptions for such uses. Um, there was a sign up sheet for this one as well. Did we have anyone sign up? The main. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone that would like to speak at this public hearing? Yes, Ben. If you are speaking tonight at the public hearing, we do ask you if you're speaking as an individual to limit your comments to three minutes. If you're speaking on behalf of a group, we ask you to keep those comments to five minutes. When you do approach the podium, if you'll identify yourself, please, by name and address. So ben, welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, I guess I'm speaking for a group and for an individual, so however you want to time me on that. I'll take eight minutes if you give me. You know, right? We'll go with five. Anyway, we'll go with five. So uh, my name is Ben Sproul of 908 6th Avenue, but I'm also president uh, of the Outer Banks Restaurant Association, so I speak on behalf of a variety of our members as well. Um, I, I'm in an awkward position because, as you know, I serve at the pleasure of the board on the planning board and have seen all of this in detail a about a month ago. Um, uh, and, and the record may show that it was a unanimous decision to forward it to you. I would, was trying to abstain, so we'll correct the record later. But the, the reason being is I, I think we're going down a, a bad path here on, on, on these items. There are, and it's not just me, like I said. I speak for my members. I'm also for my own restaurant. I own the, the pit, uh, Board Riders Grill. What you see in here are... I think is a, is a great attempt to try to codify something that hasn't been codified before. And, and as a member of the planning board, I see the logic in that. However, I think that it's going to have unintended, if we would go forward with it, you'd have unintended consequences that is not what we desire as a community and what our business community desires moving forward. Um, you know, it only applies to a handful of restaurants. However, because there haven't been rules like this in the past, uh, outdoor dining is taking place throughout the town, and it's also being encouraged in, in our neighboring towns uh, to great success. Um, when you add things like adding health department approval for additional seating outside, you put existing businesses in a box they, they can't get out of. Uh, for instance, if, if uh, you go over a certain number of seats, next thing you know, you need another bathroom, another sink, more lines on your septic system, and when you only have a certain site, uh, you, you can't accommodate that. And so things that are already going on in the town will no longer be able to go on at a variety of locations, uh, at a variety of scales. Um, the same goes with the you know, commercial site plan. It's a very involved process. Uh, it costs money to prepare these things these days. And I think you're discouraging business in a, a time and a, in a community that wants to encourage business. We're kind of the central business hub of the Outer Banks. And um, I think we can always do a better job rather than placing more restrictions on businesses that are trying to grow. Um, the logic behind it is, and, and I don't know what the thinking behind how we got here is, but the, the reason other towns are going forward with this is, is that this sort of use, if you codify it too much, you end up with uh, a, too high of an expense to add those seats or the, that activity. Um, however, you have to think of those seats as as places that you're only to use when it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's not raining, and it's the summer, basically. Um, and then I have a second part to my comments, if I'm not running out of time yet, and that is to say that while I'm up here to, to urge you to discard this in its entirety and to not move forward in this direction because I think it has more negative effects than positive, I also, if you were going to move forward, there are a, a wide number of little details that are problems with the way this is written. Um, so I can go through those as well, uh, but I don't know if, if that's appropriate now or you might ask me later if you're going to move forward. I think things that, that come to mind are, are, are uh, 153.082B1 is exceptions, okay? Um, so that basically um, limits the waiting and dining area to 33% of the setback, which I think is unnecessary. But more importantly, it also says that it has to have, be limited to raked earth, gravel, mulch, lawn, plantings. So it doesn't accommodate 
what it accommodates in other parts of the proposal that says decks would be included, which you can see that would apply to my business. Um, so maybe that was an oversight. Also, it requires a four-foot minimum fence. That's item seven under 153.82 B1, a four-foot fence. But decks generally have a 42-inch <coughs> handrail or, or seating around the edge of them. So I don't think that you're trying to build a fence around a deck. Maybe, maybe that's an oversight. Um, and then when, when I look down at, just, just think about what you're doing when you go down the path of you know, over-regulating is the way we see it. Um, under the nonconformity uh, structures, the, the changes in plan by owner or developer, developer, you know, you have, if you have a nonconforming structure, the, ad, the uh, administration can approve or may approve if there's no increase in nonconformity, but also requires that you wouldn't have litter, that you have waste receptacles that have attached lids, uh, that you can't have a roof. And of course, if you're looking at my business, you're going to tell people that they can eat on the deck, but they can't eat underneath the covered porch. Uh, there's an exception in one area of it, but it's not in the changes in development part. So there's just technical glitches in it. It's, it's pretty comprehensive what you're trying to do, and I don't think it's entirely well thought out at this point. But like I said, I'll circle back to the fact that, um, and, and what I was saying about the receptacles is, we live in a world where uh, North Carolina requires restaurants that serve alcohol to recycle. So trash cans have, by and large, gone away from public spaces in lieu of the staff sorting recyclable, not recyclable, um, because we don't want the customers who generally would put everything in, in both bins, you know. Uh, so these requirements seem a little excessive in my view. And they're just examples, but I think the whole thing is, is full of those kinds of options where you say, well, it doesn't sound bad when you read it, you know, in an empty room, but when you see it out in, in, re in reality, in real life, um, you realize it's going to cause a lot of... Um, a lot of businesses to not be able to do the business they knew now, it would deter businesses from expanding, and I don't think it's the direction the town wants to go. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Is there anyone else this evening that would like to sp speak at this? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you'll identify yourself by name and address, please. Hi, I'm uh, Lewis Hunt, and I live at 516 Canal Drive, and I work at the Ramada. Just to kind of go along with what Ben was saying, I have a lot of questions about it as far as, like, what considers seating. Um, my deck area has 25 seats, but with the Ramada, we have much more seating on our deck for guests at the hotel, so that's, like, 35 more seats. So does that mean I'm 60? Um... I'm nervous. That's okay. That's I all right. I cook no, food. You're sorry. Fine. You're fine. Um, and then also, <laughs> we have uh, events where we um, let our property use for like the polar plunge and things like that. I know there's very detailed. Um, you have to say what you're using your outdoor area for. So am I going to have to have like 12 months planning to come to you and get the um, permit for that for like all events that come up? And then if I have a group that I didn't know about that wants to use our property. Um, do I get like a new amendment to the original amendment? You know, I, um, sorry. Uh, so that was one thing because uh, there are other properties that they could go. So if we restrict um, my property to that, they might go to the Hilton, you know, a different town. And so then I would lose business at my property um, specifically to this. Um, I don't want to talk anymore. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. But uh, I'm just saying, um, forgetting a lot of stuff too. I should have wrote it down. But a lot of what Ben was saying, I talked with him previously, and you know we went back and forth about it. And it is, um, I mean, it might be a good idea because I know it was very specific about um, outdoor activities affecting other properties. Um, and so we don't want to do that. And you know, if that was an issue, I think we could do that on like a civilian person-to-person -person basis, as opposed to putting in a very restrictive law that might affect what business I can have outside for 12 months. You know, because uh, it was a conditional use permit, so I guess I'd have to reapply. And um, I guess that's it. Sorry. Okay, no. Nope, you're fine. And we will get to a lot of what, in case you're new to the format, we'll get to a lot of what you brought up after everyone has a chance who wishes to speak after they have a chance, and then we'll respond to some of the things you've brought up. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else this evening that would like to speak at this public hearing? Anyone else? Okay, we will close the public hearing. 
And Meredith, I'm going to ask you to do an introduction, please, and maybe a little more detailed on this one. Um, anything that you capture from those questions, great. If not, we will specifically ask and, and bring those up. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, as you may recall, in January of, of 2013, the Board of Commissioners approved a request um, made by an applicant to add outdoor waiting activity areas for restaurant establishments. Um, the amendment included some setback requirements, parking requirements for outdoor waiting areas, and prohibited food service. Um, this request, uh, upon further review of the request and looking at the uh, existing establishments within the town, um, staff developed some amendments that would um, actually relax some of the regulations that were part of that request. The revisions would make outdoor waiting activity areas take it out of the conditional use permit. It would um, add outdoor dining activities, which currently was not a prohibited um, activity in the town. And outdoor waiting activities would be basically subject to the same requirements that the original amendment um, provided. However, it would be done under administrative approval rather than the full conditional site plan approval that was previously approved by the board as requested by the applicant. Outdoor dining activity area areas would also be added, a definition would be added that allowed for dining in the outdoors. It would also follow basically the same guidelines as the original amendment, including the setbacks. However, in both amendments, parking requirements were eliminated. There is no additional parking required for outdoor activity or outdoor dining areas above what's required for the primary restaurant. Um, these are both accessories to restaurants. A quick summary of the specifics that were added to the ordinance. The definition for outdoor activity area was modified in outdoor um, to include elevated decks. Elevated decks weren't previously included. Upon the inclusion of elevated decks, there was also an exception made for covered entryways. Um, Part of the amendment did not allow for any of the outdoor activity or waiting area or dining area to be covered. There was an exception written into the ordinance that allowed 200 square feet for entryways. That covered some of the existing businesses that we know that have this type of activity going on. It allowed that exception so that it would, it would take those into account so that they wouldn't have to modify their existing conditions. The parking table of parking requirements was modified to delete parking requirements for outdoor waiting activity area that had previously been approved. Exceptions for outdoor dining area, which had previously approved setback, <coughs> was extended to the out. I mean, the setback was extended to the outdoor dining area that was previously approved for wa outdoor waiting. The conditional use in the commercial zone was changed from outdoor waiting activity area to the outdoor dining activity area. And two conditions were added, one being health department approval for dining. In the changes to owner and developer, outdoor waiting area was added to an administrative approval process for both conforming and non-conforming sites. Um, and that allowed for outdoor waiting areas to be approved at a staff level where they would not have to expend some of the money to do a full site plan and submit it for planning board and board of commissioners approval. The outdoor dining area did remain in the conditional use because it did entail some building code requirements when you add seating and when you add occupancy, there are building code requirements that have to be addressed and that's why it remained under the conditional use process so that it could be fully um, staffed and reviewed by all the parties and with that I'll be happy to answer any questions oh the 33 percent of the setback is a was part of the original request and it was not changed in this modification it was approved previously in January of 2013 that 33 percent of the setback could be used for outdoor dining or outdoor recreation or outdoor recreation uh, pardon me we extended that to the dining. It didn't change from the original request that was approved in, in 2013, so that wasn't modified. It was actually expanded to be side, front, and rear rather than just a side yard extension, so um, it was actually expanded. And um, covered decks was addressed. The health department approval, that's required by law. If you have dining, you have to get approval for dining areas. And um, 
just to address the special events that the gentleman from the Ramada had. Any special event is a separate permit and it would not be under this ordinance. It would be its own entity and each time you have a special event such as a polar plunge or something like that, that would be a separate permit that would be reviewed by staff and it would be totally separate from your day-to-day -day operational um, at your business. So. Um, and, and just to add to what Meredith is saying, the groups that have been doing, or used to be with the YMCA, they're already taking care of, of, they take care of those permits and come in and get the, and they've been doing that for years and years and years. What if I had like a, a wedding that wanted to be on my property, would I have to come for every wedding that wanted to be outside to here? Weddings are, weddings are accepted out at this point as a special event. Weddings are allowed in our town and you don't need special permits to have a wedding, but you can't. Not from the town of Kill Double Hills. I'm not sure what the health department would tell you, but the right. town uh, doesn't require okay, so that. As far as like if this passes, I won't have to come get a conditional permit. <laughs> no, and, and what if you can um, either later after this meeting or maybe even tomorrow, follow up with all the specifics directly with Meredith. But I think some of your concerns about this, this isn't, um, this isn't looking to change the way that you've been doing business. And, and let me go ahead and add to your introduction, because um, I think this may clear up some of the confusion too, some of the items that Ben brought up. Currently in the town of Kittle Hills, um, it is not permitted to serve food outside. So if, if it, but we're aware that it's happening. And um, we think it's a good thing, but there, it needs to be done appropriately and, meet, and where it meets health department and building code regulations. So um, the, the intent of this, is, of this ordinance was not to try to place additional restrictions. It's actually to make it um, legal to be doing this type of activity. Because what potentially the downfall for those restaurants who are doing, who are serving outside, regardless of when they're doing it, the, the concern is, you know, we, we operate on a complaint driven, a complaint driven environment. And all it would take is one phone call to any of the planning staff or to us, and then we say, hey, we got a complaint at such and such. And right now, because we don't have an ordinance that would allow this, they would have to go in and shut that shut that activity down and potentially the business could be fined every day that they're not, well, actually there was, prior to this, there wouldn't even be a way to get into compliance. So if you're serving outside in a patio or on a deck or anything like that, I mean, it's just not allowed. And so what we were hoping to do was create an ordinance that would make it allowable if you can meet health department and building code regulations. And I mean, that's just, it's a matter of the law that those would need to be met. Um, but it's, tr it's not to restrict or, or hurt businesses or not be business friendly. It, in fact, really the, the underlying premise was trying to be business friendly and, and give bus businesses an option to be able to comply. And if they can't meet the requirements that would be associated with serving outside, then at least they'll be able to use their, act their outdoor area for the waiting and activities. And so it gives, it also gives businesses some options now that they could have an outdoor activity and waiting area, or if they can be compliant with health department and state building code regulations, then they could serve outside. So that's the, the foundation of where this ordinance is coming from. Did I misquote or speak on any of that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, we really need to bring the board into the discussion. So let me pause for a moment and see um, what comments or questions the board members have. Yes. Um, how many of the objections that we heard this evening were discussed in, in planning board when this was under consideration at the planning board level? All of these objections were discussed at the planning board level. They were? Yes, sir. All right. And, uh, and actually, there was a, one of the objections was the covered area. And at the planning board level, the planning board added the exception for the 200 square foot covered area. Um, for entryways to accommodate that um, because it did exist in reality and we didn't want to cause hardships to those businesses who were currently wanted to try to make this transition for those that were currently having these activities as smooth as possible so that they could continue to um, perform at, at the level that they were currently without much hardship. 
And, and all of these objections that we heard this evening were addressed without exception? <clears throat> I recall that all the hardships were brought up and discussed at the planning board level and the amendment was forwarded as you see it today to the Board of Commissioners with a favorable recommendation. I, th I think right. Ben even um, voted in favor of it. <laughs> well, he didn't say anything, so. Yeah. Right. I don't have any further questions, thank you. I, um, well, one of my questions was, was kind of answered um, in the fact that it, what are our options if we don't do this and in the fact that it's not currently allowable for, for folks to serve outside. Well, and th th there is a small correction to that. They, they can serve outside, but that area has to be counted as part of their primary restaurant and it has to be parked at 1 to 100. So they have to, to encompass that area into their primary business and say this is part of our dining area, therefore it would be required to, again, meet health department, but it would also have to be parked at 1 to 100. And in looking at our current businesses, that was the encumbrance that, that was prohibitive for all of them, is that there was not parking. enough room to add parking. And that's why the parking requirement was removed. So really what, what we're doing is working with folks to try to make it more more easy easier thank you that's the word <laughs> more relaxed and and we're, we're trying to be friendly to the to the businesses to make to make this easier for them to be able to to, to work um, and bring some into compliance thank you um, I, I guess the um, the other question that I had and I wrote it down but now I'm trying to try to, to find problems um, And there, oh, I wanted to make sure that I understood that when we were talking about decks, because I know Ben brought up the, the fact that the decks was not in there. Did I hear you say that that was included in there? Um, in, the, in the definition for outdoor dining activity and outdoor waiting activity area, there's an exception um, that excludes covered entrances not exceeding 200 square feet. Okay, so it doesn't. It says you can't be, your outdoor dining or, or, or waiting area can't be a covered area, meaning if you put a permanent cover over it, it becomes more than a, a seasonal, as Ben said, a seasonal. And that's one of the reasons that the, the parking was taken out, is that you, you can only use an outdoor area, but so often. You can't use it when it's raining or blowing, like, you know, people probably wouldn't have enjoyed it too much today or in the middle of winter or when it's 110 degrees. And, and that being that it's not a permanent part of the restaurant um, allowed us to, to really embrace that uh, relaxation of the parking requirements because it wasn't going to, it would only, you know, average be used about two months solid out of the year, two and a half months. Um, but the, the covered deck was uh, 200 square foot was added for entryways because of the discussion at the planning board level because of what been mentioned before and that's in the definition section of what these activities are okay and it doesn't specifically say what kind of entryway covered entryway okay other than that it doesn't say whether it's on the ground or whether it's up in the air no it says elevated depth oh, okay all right that's what i needed to know bill you had yeah and is the redundancy that ben cited the requirement for a fence in addition to the already code required 42 inch railing around a deck, is, is that correct? Is there a redundancy? There is a requirement for a fence. Um, it's required for the dining or activity area. It doesn't specify if it's on an elevated deck and the fence was really intended for those ground activity or dining areas, not elevated deck and so, uh, areas. And so in the instance where the deck is somewhat elevated and the railing is required by building code, there is a redundancy, is that what I'm hearing? there would be a redundancy for an elevated deck. How do we fix that? Um, on number seven of the um, ordinance that you're looking at, you would accept out elevated decks from the fence requirement. Um, it, it says on sides not adjoining the principal structure, the area designated as outdoor waiting activity areas shall be bordered with a minimum four foot high fence and shall be buffered with landscape as set forth in 153073F2B. You could, uh, and Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, you could simply accept for elevated decks. All right, when, when the appropriate time comes, Mayor, I'd like to offer that amendment to this. Uh, 
Okay, thank you. And if you wanted the 200 square foot entryway to apply to ground level as well as elevated decks, that would be simply um, a modification to those definitions. You're getting out of four of my depth now. I'm right now, those definitions do only apply to elevated decks. Yeah. That exception for 200 square feet. Yeah, and Meredith, would you, uh, I, I believe you and I talked at one time about um, the health department's uh, position on this. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, if I, I don't know that I can really speak to the health department regulations for dining, but I do know that they are responsible for permitting dining and service areas, and there are state requirements that they have to follow. And any dining area should be um, reviewed and approved by, by the health department. Um, and that requirement is actually a little bit of redundancy because it's required by the state whether we put it in our ordinance or not. It was just making anybody who made application aware of all the requirements we were going to be looking for, well, as well I as the building code. We put building code requirements in here, too, just to make people aware that there may be building code requirements. Yeah, um, I, um, I don't know whether it was you that I was speaking to, but uh, at one point um, I'm under the impression that if if you're not serving outside, then the health department says they're, you know they. They're not going to do anything about it, as long as you're not serving. So you can you could it. order something inside and carry it out. You can That's order right. something inside and carry it out, so, and that would not be service, and that would not be considered a dining area. Right. So that really is is really kind of opens it up for a lot of people. And the original uh, requestee did not want to serve outside. They wanted if you wanted to have a, a cold. Coke, you needed to go inside and, and order it, and you could take it back outside with you. Just Coke, and, and only and, Coke, and play and, and play in their their uh, outdoor area. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the original amendment was intended for was not for service. But if you were going to bring service into it, then the health department did need to. Um, so if, if someone's already up to capacity on their seating inside, they can just go ahead and do this as long as they don't carry it out and give it to them, right? Basically. As long as there's not service. Right. Okay. Yeah, the health department's pretty specific on that. I mean, if we if we do something temporary at the bomb center, they they have to come and inspect us for. I mean, they're they're real specific on that. Yeah. That's if you're serving. Right? Correct. And, right. and that would be regardless of if we put it in our ordinance or not. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was really just a reminder a reminder to those who were applying that that was going to be something that was going to be required so when someone went into this they knew all the elements that were going to be required to to have one of these um uses so if you ordered something inside and went outside to wait and um to say that the staff person was on their way to some place and they could just drop it off on the way <laughs> or something how far are we going to push this no comment? <laughs> I don't think she needs to. Okay. Um, any, um, any other questions or comments? <coughs> <laughs> Bottom line is, as I see this is it's, it, it finally, not finally, but it, it will give the restaurants an avenue where currently they don't have an avenue if they want to serve outside. So it, it gives them a choice. We're not forcing this on anyone, but at least there would be an option if someone wanted to, to do this type of service. And if they don't want to do this type of service, but they want to have people come pick their food up inside and take it out, then they just can use the outdoor activity and waiting area. That's fine, too. Um, or they don't have to do either. And if they're doing just the outdoor activity and waiting area, it's now administrative versus conditional use, so it makes it even easier on the, the applicant. It all can be handled um, by staff. Um, so that's why I have been a big proponent of this is because I feel like we would finally have avenues for, for these restaurants to, to be able to, to do what I think is an asset in our town and, and have this outdoor dining and, and recreation. So, And this isn't, uh, this, you know, this code is going to be on paper, it's not carved in stone, so anytime we need to make an adjustment to it, that can always be, be done. If something isn't really working here, we can address it at some point. Okay. And um, Mrs. Mayor, if yes. you wanted to have the covered entries be an exception in all cases, not just elevated decks, it really just requires a comma 
in the um, definition. Okay, and I'm sorry, Meredith, what page are you on then? I'm again? on page one of the amendment. Okay. In the two definitions. It says, unenclosed seasonal utilized area outside the primary structure, including elevated decks. If you simply add a comma there, excluding covered entrances not to exceed 200 square feet, that would exclude them all rather than only the covered deck. And if you do that in both definitions, it's just under definitions here. And to address that as well as Commissioner Pitts. Yeah, my amendment is to, um, actually it's on page six. And let's see if I can figure out the paragraph numbering. B, two, C, seven. And I think first we should add by a minimum four foot, I believe you intended to say fence. After four foot in parenthesis. Mm -hmm. This is page and six of seven. And shall be buffered with landscaping as set forth in umpty ump umpty ump, with the exception of elevated decks that are already uh, enclosed by with required railings. Ra required railings. <clears throat> Mary, did you get that? Comments on this? Are you okay? Yes. May we add that also to two little b? I'm sorry. The first one it would be two little c, c seven. Two little c seven. Page five. Page I thought five. that's what I was doing. Non-conforming to dirt. It's in two spots. It's number yeah, seven under the um, non-conforming commercial, and it's number seven under the administrative oh, okay. approval for okay. commercial. And I missed it. I missed okay. it. Okay. Got it. So it's, in it's both on places. page five of seven. seven and page six of seven. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Okay. Good find. Okay. So um, a motion would be in order. I move approval of the changes. amendments. <clears throat> okay. I'll second that. Um, Can let us get away with it? <laughs> yeah, hold on. All right. Um, Commissioner Pitt, do you mind adding a consistency statement to? No, we do the consistency statement when we so approve do just, the. Just do the. We're first. With the, let me make sure that I'm clear on your motion then. Is your motion just to make these changes to? Yes, the okay. amend, amendment to the motion or the amendment to the proposal. Okay. Oh. So the existing most motion and second is just to make these three changes to this proposed amendment. Correct. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. I move a proposal of the proposed amendment um, uh, 153.002 definitions, 153.076 parking, 153.082 exceptions, 153.177 commercial zone conditional uses, and 153.359 changes of plan by owner or developer to modify outdoor waiting activity areas and add outdoor activity areas as a use in the commercial zone and add definition parking and requirements, parking requirements and setback exceptions for the uses. Uh, use in the commercial zone and add definition parking requirements and setback exception for the boy this is going top of here. Uh, this this proposal is consistent with all comprehensive plans and other def official adopted plans of the town and killed over hills that are applicable uh, the ap amendment as amended is reasonable and in the public interest because it allows greater flexibility for outdoor uses in conjunction with restaurants thank you a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signal by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Just, I don't know if uh, some of you may not know, but that the consistency statement thing is a state requirement, and we have to say it out loud at any time there's a, something like this is taken care of. Okay, 